amendments to Local Government Act 171 will give power to authorities to take stringent action. Government to ensure Petronas able to return to profitability. Welcome to News at 10, I'm Brendan Lipol. Amendments to the Local Government Act 1976, Act 171, will give power to local authorities, PBT, to impose stricter action against factories responsible for causing pollution. Speaking at a press conference in Alustak, Kedah today, Housing and Local Government Minister Zuraida Kamaruddin said, for the moment, enforcement against those found committing such offences falls under the jurisdiction of the Environment and Water Ministry through the Department of Environment. According to Zuraida, her ministry is responsible for issuing operating licence in line with the jurisdiction of PBT, adding that they are aware of the loopholes in Act 171. Therefore, she said the amendment will expand the power of PBT in imposing stern action against the offenders. Zuraida was asked to comment on whether her ministry can take stern action, including by revoking operating licence of the factories that have caused pollution, like what happened in Sungai Gong, Rawang, Selangor. Meanwhile, the Human Rights Commission of Malaysia, Suhakam, has called for more effective law enforcement, including heavier penalties for offenders involved in water resources pollution. Suhakam, in a statement today, proposed the move to avoid water source contamination in Sungai Gong, Rawang, recently, which affected water supply to 1,292 areas in the Klang Valley from recurring. Suhakam is also concerned that the Water Services Industry Act 2006 and the Environmental Quality Act 1974 are not being enforced effectively to protect public health and the environment. It said recurring water contamination incidents indicate that the huge gaps in these laws have yet to be addressed, adding that there is an urgent need to review the relevant laws. The Commission also urged business entities to be more responsible in ensuring that human rights in obtaining clean water supplies are protected. Extra focus is given to industrial sectors to further improve the country's economy which was affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. International Trade and Industries Minister Datu Sri Mohammad Azmin Ali said he had met with industry playmakers of affected agencies and associations to identify any additional required. Saya bawa semua pimpinan tertinggi daripada uh, MITI, Madrid, MIDA, uh, MIDF, uh, MARI, uh, SIRIM, semata-mata untuk engage dengan stakeholders, uh, chambers of commerce, uh, persatuan persatuan pengilang, industri, SMEs, uh, PKS untuk mendengar apakah keperluan tambahan yang perlu diberikan oleh kerajaan kerana kita mahu kecerdasan ekonomi ini benar-benar dapat diuruskan segera untuk mencapai pertumbuhan yang positif pada tahun 2021. He said this to reporters after an event in Alostar, Kedah recently. The minister added that more than 15 million people have returned to work simultaneously, reducing the unemployment rate as various sectors have resumed operation. The 21 billion ringgit loss recorded by Petronas in the second quarter of 2020 will not impact the country's development. According to Finance Minister Tengku Datuk Sri Zafrul Tengku Abdul Aziz, the government will continue to focus their finances especially towards the development of the country. Sebab itulah uh, defisit fiskal kita akan naik. Uh, defisit fiskal, fiskal kita ada ujuran bajet 2020 lebih kurang 3.2%. Lepas uh, uh, announcement uh, stimulus yang pertama itu naik ke 3.4% dan sekarang selepas perjalanan dan perhatian, defisit fiskal kita naik ke 5.8% uh, dan mungkin sampai 6%. Uh, dua minggu lepas pun di Parlimen, saya telah mendapat uh, kelulusan uh, daripada Parlimen uh, um, untuk menaikkan uh, our ceiling, debt to debt to GDP, kita, um, ke 60%. 
He added that the government is committed to continue with important spendings to aid the rakyat and boost the economy. He said this after a courtesy visit of Trangano Menteri Besar Datuk Sri Dr. Ahmad Samsuri Mokta. The main focus of the Finance Ministry's official visit to Trangano is to meet with representatives of associations and the tourism industry affected by COVID-19 as well as representatives of the oil, gas and petrochemical industries. The government plans to introduce a new type of key performance indicator, KPI, to all Secretary General and Director Generals at every ministry and agencies. Chief Secretary to the Government, Tan Sri Mohamad Zuki Ali, said the new KPI will enable better evaluation and assessment of public services. He further explained that due to the COVID-19 pandemic, numerous projects and government programs were interrupted and had to be postponed. Therefore, the government is required to act swiftly to ensure that the projects are to be completed according to schedule. Sehubungan itu saya tetapkan, saya dengan KPPA tadi tetapkan ianya akan jadi KPI pada KSU, KSU dan juga KP untuk mereka sama-sama menggerakkan ekonomi. Kalau mereka gagal untuk menggerakkan seperti mana yang dijualkan, mereka akan tidak alhamdulillah sebab dan alasan yang menyebab untuk dipertimbangkan oleh jatuan kuasa di peringkat saya dan juga KPPA serta beberapa ahli yang kita lantik nantilah. Speaking at an event in Putrajaya, he also informed that the government will also soon announce an initiative to help Malaysians who have lost their jobs. The Education Ministry is identifying a more holistic and comprehensive approach to overcome the lack of electronic device ownership among students. Now, this is to ensure a smoother virtual teaching and learning process at home in the future. Its Minister, Dr. Mohd Radzi Majidin, said according to the Ministry's survey on online learning involving 900 students nationwide, 36% do not own any electronic device. Due to this, Dr. Mohamed Razi said the ministry is looking holistically at the best approach to enable students to have reasonable access to devices and implement a comprehensive system that can provide optimum benefit to them. He told this to reporters after attending the Kupi Kupi event at Sakola Menenga Nanbayan in Tambunan, Sabah today. Earlier, the minister in his speech said the education ministry was also committed to infrastructural development in the state, including the upgrading of school buildings, as many are still in poor condition. As such, he said the ministry would update the list of such schools to determine priorities in order to speed up upgrading works based on the Public Works Department assessment. Dr. Mohamed Radzi also called for stronger support from the Sabah Education Department, teachers and parents, as he believed that close cooperation between the entities will create a better education system. Coming up, one positive COVID-19 case recorded under PCA scheme. One positive case of COVID-19 was recorded under the Malaysia-Singapore's Periodic Commuting Arrangement PCA scheme, which commenced on 17 August. Health Minister Datu Sri Dr. Adam Baba, however, said thus far no case has been reported under the reciprocal Green Lane RGL scheme. Bila mereka positif, what we do, kita akan uh, mengendalikan uh, kes ini dengan cepat, iaitu kes contact tracing. Kita akan siasat uh, perjalanan mereka dan juga kontak yang ada, terutama kontak rapat. Kontak rapat ni kalau kita dapati mereka ada di Malaysia, kita akan anggap dia sebagai person under, under surveillance. Lah. Speaking at a press conference after officiating the Sungai Rungit Health Clinic in Kota Tinggi, Johor today, Datuk Sri Dr. Adam said the confirmed positive individual was a 35-year-old Malaysian man working in Singapore who returned to the country under the PCA scheme on the 29th of August. He said the asymptomatic man tested positive for COVID-19 on the 2nd of September and was subsequently admitted to a hospital in the state and reported to be in a stable condition. Elaborating further, he said that since 17 August until today, 
A total of 2,647 individuals under PCA and 815 people under RGL were recorded entering the country from Singapore. The PCA and RGL schemes are implemented to address the needs of different groups of cross-border travellers in both countries. For the COVID-19 updates, the Ministry of Health, MOH, reported six new cases today, bringing the number of cumulative cases in Malaysia up to 9,397. Health Director General Tan Sri Dr. Noor Hisham Abdullah in a statement said three of the cases today were locally transmitted and the remaining three import cases. Two of the locally transmitted cases originated from the Benteng LD cluster and another severe acute respiratory infection, SARI, detected at a medical centre and is undergoing treatment in Hospital Pulau Pinang. Meanwhile, the three import cases involve three foreigners from Indonesia and Bangladesh who contracted the virus while overseas. All import cases were detected in the federal territories of Kuala Lumpur. Meanwhile, two cases made a recovery today and the number of total recovered cases is 9,115 or 97% of all cases. No new deaths were recorded today and the death toll remains at 128. A 45-year-old man was arrested for breaching the Enforced Movement Control or the EMCO protocol in Ambangan Heights, Amanjaya, Sungai Petani, Kedah. Kuala Muda Chief Police ACP Adzli Abusha said the man, wearing a white bracelet, was arrested near a share house and failed to provide a valid reason for exiting the EMCO area. The man admitted to leaving his house in Amanjaya to meet his son outside the EMCO area. He also admitted to have left the area since 31st of August by going past roadblocks. He made bail after police have taken his statement and details and the case is investigated under Section 270 of the Penal Code and Section 22, Subsection B of the Prevention and Control of Infectious Diseases Act 1988. 131 individuals were arrested yesterday for flouting the Recovery Movement Control Order RMCO rules yesterday. According to a statement by Senior Minister for Security, Dr. Sri Ismail Sabri Yaakob, 112 of them were compounded, 17 remanded, while the remaining two made bail. Common offences include premises operating outside of regulated business hours, failure to prepare entry-exit logbooks, not wearing face masks and participating in mass events without practising proper physical distancing. Meanwhile, 18 arrests were made yesterday through obbenting involving 67 illegal immigrants and four skippers. Also seized were four land vehicles and a boat. The Royal Malaysia Police PDRM deployed 79 roadblocks nationwide to curb the entry of illegal immigrants immigrants into the country, especially via red trails. The statement also said the Ministry of Housing and Local Government conducted 11 sanitation operations yesterday at Pulau Pinang, Sabah, Selangor, Malacca, Trawa and Kedah. Meanwhile, RMCO enforcement officers conducted 872 checks and found that all inspected premises are adhering to SOPs. The COVID-19 pandemic has severely impacted various industries and the food and beverage F&B sector is no exception. Many businesses were forced to shut down and countless Malaysians lost their jobs during the implementation of the Movement Control Order, MCO. Now, as part of efforts to revitalise the F&B sector, the owner of Fatin's Kitchen Restaurant, Jusdian Abdul Mali, is doing his best to provide employment to individuals affected by the pandemic, especially to hospitality industries, casualties. Saya gunakan hikmat sebab ni sebab saya pun ex hotelier. So dia orang pun ex hotelier tapi saya dah berhenti lama dah. So saya terasa dia punya bahang ni macam mana. Bila dah tak segera dah biasa dalam hotel industri, bila kenang ni bila ter, 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 terjadi dia rasa jam sekejap. So bila buat fatin ni sekak apa kata kita ambil ex hotel ex hotel yang zaman MCO ni mana yang terkena ni kita interview dia orang so kita tapis 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 only selected people kita akan tarik yang ke sinilah Rosli Zam Rosli, who previously worked with the catering company responsible for catering meals for the Malaysian Hajj pilgrims in Madina and Mecca was among those who have benefited from Fatin's Kitchens initiative 
saya minat ke saya lebih pada cenderung pada masak banyak. Ha. Masak banyak eh. Masak banyak-banyak. 2 3000 orang punya makan. Di situ lepas pada Sungai Besi tu saya try cuba dengan kawan-kawan uh, try untuk masak untuk uh, jemaah Malaysia di Madinah dan di Mekah. A former hotel employee in Kuala Lumpur, Junaidi Jajuri, who lost his source of income during the MCO, said he now can breathe a little easier after securing employment at the restaurant. Menganggur lebih kurang uh, empat bulan, dan saya dapat tawaran bekerja di Fatin Kitchen. Alhamdulillah, dapat menyambung hidup dengan enam orang anak. Three men who were charged with the murder of a man at a petrol station in Taman Pelangi in Johor Bahru three years ago were acquitted and discharged by the High Court today. Judicial Commissioner Dr. Shahna Sulaiman Frid Ganjia G, 22, Yip Kahau, 26, and Wun Kian Hui, 25, after finding that the prosecution had failed to prove a prima facie case against the trio. Dr. Shahnas in her ruling said the closed-circuit camera, CCTV, footage at the petrol station were too blurry to link the three accused to the case. She also said that the DNA samples were not compatible with blood found at the location, this in addition to investigations not done on the alibis. Dr. Shahnas added that the prosecution had also failed to link the BMW car to the murder. Gun and five others still at large were accused of causing the death of Tan Aik Chai, 44, at a petrol station at 7.30pm on 17 December 2017 along Jalan Sri Pelangi in Taman Pelangi. Yip and Woon, along with two others still at large, were accused of abetting the murder with Gun and five others still at large at the same time and place. A total of 22 witnesses were called to testify in the trial that began last year, during which 42 exhibits were produced. The government plans to appoint Takme religious teachers from the Orang Asli community as part of efforts to boost understanding of Islamic teachings among the group. Minister of Prime Minister's Department for Religious Affairs, Dato Dr. Zulkifli Muhammad Al Bakri said a special program will be established for that purpose to achieve the one Orang Asli settlement, one Takme teacher target. Speaking to reporters after officiating the Kambara Kaseh Mualaf 2020 program in Kampong Kuala Bo, Cameron Highlands, Pahang today, Dr. Dr. Zulkifis said he hoped that the plan which is still being refined would be implemented as soon as possible. InsyaAllah tak ada masalah. Saya perlu bincang dengan Jakim dan juga pihak negeri untuk menyusung atu. Dan kami ada kecanaan kepada beberapa tempat, terutamanya daripada orang asli, termasuk juga seperti banduan-banduan yang mana kekangan kadir jakin tak mencukupi jumlah mereka terlalu ramai. Veteran actor Dato Zulkifli Zain was laid to rest at the UK Padana Islamic Cemetery in Ulu Klang today. The burial was at 12.50 p.m. after Dato Zulkifli's remains were taken to the cemetery at about noon after funeral prayers at the UK Padana Mosque. Apart from family members, several artists and close friends of the late actor were at the cemetery to pay their last respects. Among them included film personalities Iman Manan, Dato Yusuf Haslam and Dato Rosham Noor. Dato Zulkifli, 76, died at his residence in Uke Perdana at about 7.30 last night due to complications from multiple medical conditions such as high blood pressure, diabetes, heart and kidney problems. He had been hospitalised several times. The former president of the Veterans Artists Association of Malaysia began his career as an actor in the film Jiwa Remaja in 1975. He subsequently went on to appear in more than 10 films and hundreds of dramas. He is survived by his wife, actress Date Nur Mala Oma, and children Dr. Nur Zizi, Nur Zaza, Nur Zazila, Nur Zazlin, and Muhammad Nur Zabaik.
several stabbed in major incidents at Birmingham. That and more coming up in our foreign segment. Australian officials extended a strict virus lockdown of the country's second biggest city by two weeks today, saying new cases had not dropped enough to prevent another spike. Melbourne residents were due to exit a harsh six-week lockdown by next weekend, but face continued restrictions for months to come, with Victoria State Premier Daniel Andrews saying the current lockdown would remain in place until the 28th of September. Just 63 new cases and five deaths were recorded in Victoria today after peaking above 700 at the height of the outbreak. But health officials are taking a cautious approach. Hopes of a return to normality this month have been dashed with an overnight curfew, restrictions on visitors to homes and a limit on travelling more than five kilometres set to remain in place until at least 26 October. The tougher rules will be eased in Melbourne from September 13, with an overnight curfew beginning an hour later at 9pm daily exercise increased to two hours and small social bubbles created for people living alone. The announcement comes a day after more than a dozen anti-lockdown protesters were arrested in Melbourne during clashes with police. Police have launched a murder investigation after being called to reports of stabbings in Birmingham city centre in the early hours today. One man died, another man and a woman suffered serious injuries, while five others received injuries which were not thought to be life-threatening. Chief Superintendent Steve Graham said police believe the incidents were linked and the West Midlands police are hunting for one suspect in relation to the attacks. The force released a statement saying that the detectives are following a number of lines of inquiry and police has increased their uniformed and armed response in the city. Chief Superintendent Steve further assured that the police are doing absolutely everything they can to find whoever was responsible and try to understand what exactly happened. He also urged those with information to contact the police. Footage aired on British television news channels showed large areas of the city centre cordoned off as police officers wearing forensic suits worked at the scene. Birmingham, one of Britain's most ethnically diverse cities with a population of more than one million, has had an explosive recent history of gang violence. In January 2003, one gang opened fire with an illegal semi-automatic submachine gun at a rival group. Two teenage girls who were bystanders were killed in the hill of bullets. Coming up in sports, European heavyweights enjoy winning starts in Nation League. Raheem Sterling's late penalty gave England victory as they started their UEFA Nations League campaign in Iceland despite their hosts squandering the chance to rescue a point by missing an injury time spot kick. Garrett Southgate's team played. Meanwhile, a slice of luck and a moment of individual brilliance from Kylian Mbappe gave France a gritty 1 0 win away to Sweden in their nation's league clash. Promoted to the competition stops here following their group victory last year, the Swedes frustrated were world champions for the opening 40 minutes until Mbappe proved to be the difference. The 21-year-old striker got a fortunate bounce off a defender's legs as he danced through the right side of the Swedish defence before beating goalkeeper Robin Olsen from a very tight angle at his near post. With the clock ticking up towards 90 minutes, Sweden winger Emil Forsberg forced a fine save from Hugo Lloris and Marcus Barr thumped a shot that was deflected wide for a corner that the Swedes could not capitalise on as France held firm. Anthony Martial, who was in the France squad for the first time since March 2018, came on in the second half for Mbappe and was brought down by Victor Lindelof for a late penalty. However, Antoine Griezmann fired the spot kick over the bar with the final kick of the game. On Tuesday, Sweden hosts Portugal, who beat Croatia for one, while France take on the the Croatians in Paris.
On to cycling, Nance Peters scored a first home stage win on the Tour de France with Britain's Adam Yates clinging on to the overall lead on a tough Pyrenean stage that caused the shake-up. Chief amongst the day's victims was fancied French climber Thibaut Pino, who dropped out of the race for the overall standings entirely on the penultimate climb. Peters achieved his win over three major mountains in the presence of French Prime Minister Jean Castex, producing a brilliant long-range solo breakaway. But there was also a ferocious battle on the final climb of the dreaded Col de Parasuda. Yates, defending Tour de France champion Egan Bernal and French climber Romain Bader were all dropped and appeared doomed. All three, however, swooped down the Daredevil final descent to dramatically claw their way back closer to the two four men, Primoz Roglic and Nairo Quintana. Slovenian rookie Tadej Pogacar conversely managed to break from this group and gain 37 seconds back of the valuable time he lost on Friday. Drama never seems to be far away from Pino, a hero in France who spawned three kilometers from the finish of stage one, finally took a terrible toll here. Sunday's stage nine is a 153km mountain stage between Po and Laruns with two category one mountains, a tricky final descent and an 8km flat run to the finish line that promises to be a Spread affair. Now into tennis, top seeds Kristina Mladenovic and Timia Babosh will be drawn from the US Open women's doubles yesterday after government officials ordered Frances Mladenovic to quarantine, tournament organizers said. Mladenovic was one of several players who was in contact with player Benoit Paire, who was withdrawn on the eve of the competition after testing positive for COVID-19. The United States Tennis Association in a statement said all persons who were identified as having prolonged close contact with the infected player will quarantine in their rooms for the remainder of their quarantine period. The statement added that Kristana Mladenovic was one of these individuals and as the women's doubles competition has begun, the women's doubles team of Kristana Mladenovic and Timia Babosh has been withdrawn from the US Open. That concludes this evening's news at 10. A reminder of our top story, amendments to Local Government Act 171 will give power to authorities to take stringent action. Join us again at 12.30pm tomorrow. Till then, I'm Brendan LePaul. Stay tuned to Saloran Berita RTM and have a pleasant evening. Good night.